Guys, just a reminder, if you haven't seen the last video, um, we have we have our dusty shirts. They are, are they're arriving here. Uh, as you can see, they, we've got a nice stack of them. Really cool. If you haven't seen this shirt yet, I'm pretty proud of it. Why wouldn't I be? I'm having trouble showing it to you, but go check it out in the other video. The dusty shirt is live. We're gonna be shipping them out next week. If you haven't gotten yours, run to the website. I only had 50 of them made. So we'll see if they sell out. We're getting there already. Uh, but either way, there's some more stuff there too. We've got lanyards, we've got air fresheners, we've got classic tees, we've got the stickers. So stuff is coming back in stock. Get your order in now before it's all gone. In the meantime, enjoy the video. So today, on today's episode of whatever Jack's doing, we've got the jet ski. If you can uh, already tell, this is not your typical jet ski. If you haven't seen the build up on this, go check out the older videos because we did a few, I want to say tasteful things to it um, to, to make it a lot more powerful, and a lot faster than it came originally. So these jet skis are from Yamaha supercharged with a HKS supercharger from the factory. Uh, and as you guys know, I'm a little bit partial to uh, HKS stuff as evident with Dusty, which by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, we got a shirt, we got a Dusty shirt, it's out. Maybe we should do a jet ski shirt too. Maybe we should do a shirt for everything. Anyway, I'm not gonna take any attention off this right now. So these skis come with an HKS supercharger from the factory. They make like eight or nine pounds of boost. They go about 60, 62 miles an hour, something like that stock as we tested it. And uh, we got this one completely stocked with 540 hours. I mean, these things last forever. The engine, the motor, whatever, in these is awesome. It's a 1.8 liter. It's clearly purpose built for this craft. It's a marine engine. It revs to, well, from the factory, they, they don't rev that high. They rev like 7,000 RPM. But um, we turned all that up. And the reason we were able to turn all that up is because we've got a Haltech. So Haltech Elite on board. That allows us to get full control over everything. We've got the can gauge here as well, so we can monitor and watch any part of the ECU system that we want. Uh, boost, AFR, all that good stuff. But... The Haltech allowed us to turn it up. We put valve springs and retainers in it. Uh, Callus Performance hooked us up with some, some excellent parts. We upgraded the supercharger to the newest HKS supercharger, which is now making a little more boost. And that's because of two reasons. One, it's got a billet wheel. It's a much better unit. Uh, from the factory they make, with that supercharger, they make around 14 pounds of boost, something like that. Maybe 12, 13. Uh, and with the springs and retainers, we can rev the piss out of this thing. So we're revving in 9,900 9, RPM to be exact. And uh, that's getting us 16 pounds of boost plus. So uh, we did that. We also put an impeller in. Uh, we did the Riva intake. We did a fizzle intercooler. We did a turbo smart blow off valve. So we've got quite a few things added on here. The Haltech allowed us to run bigger injectors. We have a flex fuel system on board. We have a bigger fuel pump, bigger fuel system regulator. You name it. We did everything that we needed to do in order to make this thing go 80 plus miles per hour. And according to the dash, it does 90. How accurate that is, I don't know. But either way, it's pretty fun to watch that thing swing to 90 miles an hour. So anyway, we're set up with this as it is pretty well. But there's a couple of things that I wanted to do to kind of improve the dynamic here. And one of those things is the O2 sensor. So we've got a couple more products from Haltech here on board that we are going to install today. As you can see, we have the wideband here and we have a GPS speed input module as well that we're gonna be uh, applying to this setup. So first off is this wideband. The wideband that we're using now is different than the wideband that we have on there. We have a wideband, we have a WB1 on board already, but that is for a Bosch sensor. And the Bosch sensor, which we have right here, is fine for normal car automotive use gasoline that kind of stuff but when you go to alcohol or ethanol and 
You also have a marine environment where you have a lot of water because these exhaust systems are water jacketed. They spray water into the exhaust right out of the motor. You end up with a lot of moisture buildup inside of the exhaust and these sensors can't take it. There's an unprotected uh, tip on these and moisture gets inside there and causes these to fail quick. So we were going through these left and right and I spoke with the guys at Haltech and they pointed me in the right direction and that is their uh, proprietary NTK sensor. So this sensor, made in Japan, of course, only the best, um, this sensor can handle a much, much wetter environment. And that's what we need. So the, the methanol cars, alcohol cars, they produce a lot of moisture. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. And then also, you know, being in a marine environment, that just gets compounded. So this sensor should last a lot longer. We're going to test it out. That's our goal. That's what I'm hoping for. And you need the WB1 that's specific for the NTK, as you can see. NTK controller to go with it. So we've got those items here. We're going to put those in and recalibrate it so that it works. And then we can re-enable um, all of our auto-tune functions, safety functions, and everything that we have on board to allow us for full closed-loop fuel control. Uh, the next thing we're going to add, like I said, is this GPS speed input module. This is going to accurately monitor our speed via GPS. Uh, we've got our typical GPS antenna here. That plugs into the input module that puts out a signal that the Haltech can read. And then we can use this input to control a bunch of different things. One of the things that we can control is a lost function when you do a Haltech, unfortunately, on this, but it's not a really big deal. It's cruise control. So the cruise control setup is here. My goal would be to use these buttons somehow, but we're going to see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. But my goal would be to use these or at least have a switch here in this area to use this and actually set up cruise control again because for long rides, it's nice to be able to, or even no wake zones, it's nice to be able to set your speed at like, let's say eight miles an hour and then just not worry about it. And you can just keep on cruising, hands off, just a nice leisurely ride. And down here in Florida, there are tons of no wake zones. We don't wanna cause trouble. Jet skis already get enough of a bad reputation because of uh, crazy riders. I'm not one of those and I don't intend to be. So I'm gonna put that cruise control feature on so we're able to do that. We can also load it up with different types of uh, ride modes with a rotary switch that will allow us to control the rate of acceleration because this is a drive-by-wire setup. So we're gonna be able to actually have effectively a launch control. Um, I'm gonna play with that setup a little bit because when you just hammer the throttle out of the hole with these jet skis, um, there is some cavitation and that is a reduction in acceleration. So there's just nothing you can do about getting rid of it completely. Um, obviously, if you had a bigger jet pump or something like that, it would help, but we don't have that. So my fix for that is going to be using the GPS sensor to apply a limit to the amount of throttle that's being that's used out of the hole. So as long as the sensitivity is good on the sensor, which it should be, then we should be able to launch at full throttle on the on the grip, but that will actually um, not be 100% throttle immediately. And it will gradually bring it in, almost like a, a ramp, like a boost ramp. It will bring in the throttle within like, let's say one second, uh, so that we can launch at full throttle and then gradually increase in power to get out of the hole a lot more efficiently. So that's one goal we're gonna have for that. Um, sorry, I'm rambling, but I want to make sure that I'm thorough with my explanation as to why I'm doing this stuff. So let's get started on that. We'll put that sensor in. We'll get the uh, the O2 sensor in as well, and then we'll get into the ECU, do a little reprogramming, and that'll be that. And then we can go to the water. <laughs> That's the fun part. You can see the Haltech sits nicely in a factory location. It comes with a plate that bolts it up very easily. So if you have one of these Yamaha skis, definitely consider the Haltech. It is nice. And then we have a remote location for our uh, uh, connectivity jack, which I've actually moved up into here. So I can easily access it on the water when I'm doing some live tuning. But now we're gonna pull that little sensor cap out. If you have one of these uh, skis also, the um, 
the O2 sensor goes right there in the exhaust. A little bit of a pain to get to, but it works and it's good. Boom, NTK. All right, so we've got the speed sensor hooked up. We have our uh, wide band connected, our reading, so that's good. So now we've got that full functional uh, system in place. We're going to go to the water and we'll do a little setup to see if we can figure out a way, like I said, to integrate that switch. I also have the can gauge here hooked up so you can see we got our all of our parameters in here. So pretty good. Let's see where speed at. There's speed. So we're not moving right now, clearly. So we'll just have to wait until we're out on the water. But uh, anyway, hope you guys get some information out of this. Um, the setup here, you can see we've installed it cleanly. We've got the sensor here um, and then the antenna here. And the wiring goes down into the stock box and into the Elite, into the Haltech. So a pretty straightforward install. Um, if you have one of these skis and you're having trouble, let me know. Maybe I can help you out. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, a really easy to tune setup after you get all this stuff installed and you have all these sensors working. So I'm super pumped to get out to the water, test this thing out. Like I was saying, we're gonna create a sort of like a launch mode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook a button up or something, switch or something so that we have the ability to launch this thing using the speed so that it is speed controlled uh, and that will help us with the launch so that we're not overpowering and cavitating out of the hole. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, just a overall fun install using the Haltech to its fullest potential and setting up stuff uh, that normally you wouldn't see on a ski like GPS Speedo. I mean, I guess the newer skis have it, but now this one does too. So we're up to date and we're ready to go out in the water and thrash on some of those RXPs. So basic setup, just so you can show you guys, uh, here's the supercharger. Got that HKS big boy in there. Fizzle intercooler situated down in the stock location. This all fits like factory. It's amazing. Everything just works really well. So if you've, uh, if you've got a Yamaha and you want to set up something like this, let me know. I got you. I got you. All right. So we're out on the water and uh, we're tuning, clearly. So I set up a switch in order to enable and disable this feature that I've created that will limit RPM and by speed. So basically while I'm holding that switch, it'll hold the RPM down until I get to a certain speed before I let go of the switch. And that will enable full RPM and full power. So depending on where I set the limiting at, it's going to limit it at you know specific RPM uh, that, that'll prevent the cavitation. So I'm gonna to try to demonstrate that. Um, this is gonna take some while to get this dialed in, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you too much. But we're gonna do this is a preliminary test of the system. It's the first time I've been on the water in a while, so I'm also knocking some bugs out of the ski. So uh, bear with me. I'm gonna have Carla take a little video while I demonstrate a couple of limited launches and cavitating launches. So let's see how she looks. Yeah. Man, I haven't seen it on the water yet. 